Hi, this is College of Circles and I'm Jeff. Today, I'm looking at the second of Pathfinder's 2024 miniature sets, Iconic Heroes Box Set, Set 11. Now, before we get started, I wanna ask you to subscribe to this channel. As I reach certain subscriber milestones, I will be doing giveaways of various WizKids miniatures, starting with that first milestone of 100 subscribers. Now, when I play Dungeons and Dragons, I make extensive use of my miniatures. My reviews are based on how well these figures enhance gameplay at my table, how often they are likely to be used, and how much they add to the game when used. I use a 10 point scale with zero to two points in each of five categories. Those categories are details in the sculpt, quality of the paint application, how well the pose of the figure helps tell a story, how versatile the figure is, and how much the figure inspires me to want to create story and gameplay with it. Most figures will get a one in each category with exceptional traits receiving a two and traits that miss the mark of getting a zero. At my table, I generally treat the figures literally. What the player sees in the figure is what the character sees in the game. Although these figures are made for Pathfinder, I will review them as I would use them for Dungeons and Dragons. Of course, these are all my subjective opinions and yours may differ. If you like this content and want to see more, please like, subscribe, and share. With all of that said, Here's the figures. Iconic Heroes 11 is one of two Pathfinder box sets released on January 10th, 2024. It consists of six figures and had an MSRP of $49.99. The other set is the Gods of Lost Omens, a link to that review is in the description below. In Pathfinder, Iconics are characters made by Paizo to represent specific classes. Our first figure is Droven, a half-orc inventor. I love the creativity of this figure and wish I had had this in my campaign a month ago when my players were on a planet in a wild space with a cyborg surgeon. For the sculpt, there are a lot of details packed in, but the paint does not match the detail in the sculpt. It's also separating from the base. I'll be happy to find a use for a Droven, but this figure could have and should have been so much better. Our next figure is Werp who does not represent a class, but is instead Droven's potentially sentient toolbox. This figure has already made it into my game, and its simplistic paint fits well with a detailed sculpt and a fun pose. Not much to say about this little guy, except well done, WizKids. Mios is the human thaumaturge, and as such is loaded with equipment and trinkets. The sculpt has a lot going on, perhaps too much but the paint job really is exceptional in how precise all of these details are captured. For Dungeons & Dragons, Mios could be a good artificer. The only real issue I have with the figure is the lantern is just a blob of plastic, and I wouldn't know what it was without referencing the original artwork. Our fourth figure is Nalmika, a dwarven gunslinger. This figure arrived completely separated from her base and had to be glued back together. This is a constant issue with WizKids. Really, what other product do we just accept that a certain percentage will be broken as it comes out of the box? WizKids, individual, WizKids individually packed premium character figures have a small mold of base that has to be glued to the actual base. And that system may be more robust than the little pegs inserted into the base that the box set figures use. For Nomika herself, nice detailed paint job and a charismatic pose. I really like that you can read the expression in her face and that we have another good artificer figure for D&D. Up next we have Thalion, an elven psychic. The original artwork shows a blade hovering in front of Thalion. In the figure, this is depicted with a swoosh of plastic to represent the mental energy holding it up. Like with the Droven, the paint is somewhat muddy, but overall, this is a striking figure that looks really good at playing distance. Our final figure is Yoon, a human kineticist. She is very similar to Hao Jin, the Ruby Phoenix sorcerer from last year's Fist of the Ruby Phoenix. One big difference between the two is the lack of quality in Yoon's paint. All, the, all of the detail is there, but there is too much of the base showing through, making the whole figure look unfinished. The transparent birds around Yoon are so vibrant, and then she is so dour, and it's a real shame. Still, this would be the perfect figure for any D&D player wanting to feature conjure animals. Pathfinder's Iconic Heroes 11 is, in my opinion, a step up in quality from the Gods of Lost Omen set, mainly due to better details in the paint application. 
Both sets are $49.99 for six figures or $8.33 a figure. That's about $1.70 below the price of premium figures and they are close to the quality of those previous individual figures. Both sets are a step up from last year's Fist of the Ruby Phoenix and I'm hoping that the growing popularity of Pathfinder means that WizKids will devote more resources to ensuring the quality of this line. There are several more Pathfinder sets coming out in 2024 that I'm personally looking forward to. Well, that was my review for the Iconic Heroes box set, set 11. What are your thoughts on this set or my review? Leave your comments below. As always, I'm Jeff. Thank you for watching College of Circles. I'll talk to you in the next video.